Good afternoon. Welcome to the STM degree conferral ceremony. Thank you for your patience. As Father Leahy said at the beginning of the Mass, Baccalaureate Mass, we always like to extend a warm welcome, and this is as warm as we can get. So I <laughs> hope you appreciate that. It's also a call to order, so everyone just be orderly, okay? <laughs> no bad behavior today. So I've invited uh, Martino Amira Orozco and Anna Ryan Bender on behalf of the graduating students to lead the STM community in prayer. Their prayer is based on the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, and in particular, the contemplation on the incarnation and the contemplation to attain divine love. All this is a way of remembering and giving thanks to God for their time here. I invite uh, you to please be seated, and I invite our prayers to come forward. We gather on this beautiful and momentous day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God, after our years here, we still seek your face. Are we to find you in the stars above, or in the deepest, darkest valleys of our hearts? We leave this place with many answers and yet more questions, but these fuel our desire to serve you. We We remember. remember the eyes that have seen the beauty of your creation, as well as our failures to respond to that goodness. The ears that have listened attentively to your word and and heard the silenced cries of the oppressed. The feet that have walked through Massachusetts prisons, the hills of El Salvador, the streets of Boston, the halls of hospitals. The hands that have reached out to others in ministry placements, worn the pages of library books, typed countless papers, lifted up the weary, and blessed those whom we encountered. The voices that have proclaimed your goodness, singing your praises at Thursday liturgies, preaching your word, and echoing the voices of suffering and joy. The shoulders that have carried the burden of working to reconcile the wounds of division in our church and our world. The bodies that have been broken and continue to give of themselves in their surviving of trauma. The minds which have grappled with questions that emerged from our contexts, lived experiences, readings in class, prayer, and conversations with one another, from the tables of repast to Zoom meetings to the carols of the library. The hearts that beat with the pain of others and rejoiced in friendships with peers, professors, and staff members from all over the country and the world. The souls of those who day by day are being moved by the Spirit of God to embrace the call to mission. We We are are the the body body of Christ. Christ. Lord, it is true. From the very beginning we have heard. We have seen with our eyes. We have touched with our hands. Your your word of life. We've learned to find you in all things. Your grace abounds in our everyday life. We now invite all those gathered here to take a moment of silence, perhaps closing your eyes if you feel comfortable, and call to mind a few experiences or people you are grateful for today. Gracias a Dios por el don de la amistad y la esperanza que inspira en nosotros. Ta ơn Chúa vì món quà tình bạn và niềm hy vọng mà nó khơi lên trong chúng con. Thank you God for the gift of friendship and the hope it inspires in us. Gracias a Dios por el don de quienes han sido mentores para cada uno y una de nosotros y nosotras y la manera en que nos han invitado a crecer. Ta ơn Chúa vì sự hướng dẫn và những tiềm năng mà nó đem lại cho chúng con. Thank you God for the gift of mentorship which each of us has experienced and the growth which it has inspired in us. 
Gracias a Dios por el don de una comunidad que vive unida en la diversidad bajo la inspiración del Espíritu. Tạ ơn Chúa vì món quà cộng đoàn và sự hiệp nhất trong đa dạng mà chúng con tìm thấy nhờ Thánh Thần gợi hứng. Thank you God for the gift of community and the unity in diversity which we find and is inspired by the Holy Spirit. As graduates of 2021 and particularly on this Pentecost Sunday, we also notice the Spirit's movements in ways that remain mysterious during our time here. As we make meaning of the mystery, we find ourselves with converted hearts. We remember the way the presence of death dominated our thoughts as the world was seized by a global pandemic. We call to mind the three million plus lives lost in communities across the world, including our own. We continue to pray for the end to the pandemic and in a special way for the countries from which our graduates here come from that their families and communities might feel the comforting embrace of our loving God. We recognize with hope and humility the strides we have made as a school community to address the sin of racism. We pray that our church and the STM in particular can learn how to follow the continual guiding spirit towards a more radical love of neighbor. O oh, Spirit of God, like a wind that blows where it wills, life flourishes in your wake. We ask that you storm our hearts, make us one, and set us ablaze with the fire of your love. That by your grace, we may be partners in Jesus' mission of proclaiming glad tidings to the poor, liberty to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and freedom for the oppressed. Holy Spirit. It seems good to you and to us that we go out on mission. May we listen to what you have to say to the churches. Guide us to live out of love, deeply incarnate in our bodies and in our life world. Teach and remind us of all that Jesus said and did. Empower us to welcome all in God's name and to encounter Christ's face in all whom we meet. Please rise as you are able. Gathering all of our prayers into one, let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Please be seated. I should have extended a welcome to our, our guests. It's not so nice to be able to come. I wish more could have, but uh, those of you who came, thank you for, for being here. You honor us. So friends, we now arrive at that most anticipated part of the STM degree ceremony, the Dean's Remarks. <laughs> it's so wonderful that we can gather together for this celebration. Indeed, the COVID pandemic has had a, the salutary effect of reminding us just how important community is to us at STM. And that includes praying together and celebrating together in our very enfleshed selves. Heck, I never thought I would hear the following sentences I did so often this year. It's so nice to be able to go to class in a classroom. I must say you all have been very adaptive and creative, not to mention patient and forbearing these past 14 months. And for that, I thank you. But why talk about COVID when we can talk about the Holy Spirit? Today is Pentecost Sunday for crying out loud. Though you might not know it from the cobalt blue from Emory University that I'm wearing, uh, if only I'd stayed at, uh, with the big red in Nebraska, but, um, but seriously, I find it most providential that we gather, gather to celebrate your graduation 
and our sending you forth into various avenues of mystery and into the academy on this Solemnity of Pentecost Sunday. My remarks will focus on God's wondrous gift of the Spirit, to whom Paul refers as the gift of God's love poured into our hearts. During the Easter season, we've been reading the church's liturgy from the Acts of the Apostles, the story of the early church. The main protagonist of Acts is not Peter or Paul, though they feature prominently. No, the main protagonist is the Holy Spirit. And dear graduates, I encourage you to allow this same spirit to be the animating force of your ministries and for those of you going into further studies of your academic work. What happens in Acts of the Apostles when people are receptive to the power of the Spirit in their lives? What happens? They start doing the same things Jesus did in his ministry, the ministry through which he inaugurated God's reign among us. His was a, teaching, a ministry of teaching, feeding, healing, reconciling, reaching out to those in the margins to bring them good news and to include them in the company of God's love. You are called to continue that ministry, empowered by the very same Spirit whom Jesus, at the outset of his ministry, declared had anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to give sight to the blind, and to set free those who were oppressed. The conclusion of the Acts of the Apostles, proclaimed at yesterday's liturgy, has Paul, in house arrest in Rome, proclaiming the gospel openly and unhindered. Doesn't sound like much of an ending, does it? But that's the point. The story is not over. The story of the Spirit-empowered ministry of Jesus is to continue. Yes, even through folks like me and you. Events of this past year, the killing of George Floyd, and the outcries and demands for racial justice that followed, the divisions tearing apart the very fabric of our nation that came to the surface in the last election cycle, the economic and social inequities exposed by the pandemic. These events and realities reveal just how much our nation, indeed our world, needs the proclamation of the good news. And the Spirit will empower you, dear graduates, to do so in order that God's reign will take root more and more on earth as it is in heaven. What Luke sets forth about the Spirit in narrative form, Paul provides inspiring descriptions of. According to him, the Spirit transforms. The Greek verb is the word from which we get metamorphosis. The Spirit transforms his recipients into the likeness of Jesus. That is, the Spirit conforms us into the image of Jesus, whom Paul calls the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. When we allow the gift of God's Spirit to take root in us, we are empowered to grow into those qualities and characteristics of Jesus, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This list of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23 can serve as a helpful litmus test for you. By taking on and growing in these qualities and characteristics, you can be assured that you are taking on and bearing the family likeness of God, one that is expressed in self-giving love. This is what it means to manifest the image of God to others. And the Greek word for image is the source of our, our term icon. The Spirit makes us icons of Jesus. And that brings me to John, the gospel privileged in the Easter season liturgies. The Johannine Jesus refers to the Spirit as the paraclete, a term that can be rendered counselor, consoler, and advocate, in the sense of defender brief word about each. The notion of consolation is intimately connected with encouragement. The last 14 months have left many people, ourselves included, feeling greatly discouraged. 
an essential mark of spirit-empowered ministry is to encourage people, to build them up. And you can only give to others what you have first received. The paraclete, the love of God poured into your hearts, will give you the encouragement if you but open your hearts to it. The paraclete is also the spirit of truth, hence a counselor. In an age when a phrase like alternative facts passes as a non-oxymoron, when misinformation and disinformation are rampant, commitment to truth-telling is needed more than ever, especially the truth revealed by Jesus. But as was the case with Jesus, not all are receptive to the truth that he and those who minister in his name proclaims. The paraclete is also your defender and protector. In this connection, Paul associates a term, parousia, with the spirit. That term is typically rendered boldness. In fact, that is the word used to describe Paul's preaching at the end of the Acts, to which I referred to a few minutes ago. So, dear graduates, go forth from here with boldness. That's not the same as arrogance, conceit, or overconfidence. You can go forth with boldness in large part because of the education and training you have received at the STM. I referred earlier to the context in which you will be ministering. What you have to offer to others is desperately needed. It can seem all so daunting. But trust in what you have accomplished and received here at the STM. But even more, I implore you, Trust in the gift of God's spirit, God's gift of love and power that dwells within you. Let me conclude these remarks by saying that you have a home at STM and are always welcome back to Simbali Hall. We are privileged and proud to call you our graduates. You will do great things, bold things, You'll do them by doing ordinary tasks in extraordinary ways, ways that reflect the love of Christ, ways that reflect the family likeness of God's children. May God be with you and bless you always. And now before we get to that part of the ceremony that truly is the most anticipated, namely the conferral of your degrees, we will send you forth with a blessing. So, dear friends, it is an annual tradition to ask God to bless our graduates as they complete their formation at the STM and are sent forth to be the messengers of the gospel to a wounded world. So, graduates, I ask that you please stand and then turn to face your family, friends, or guests, and I invite all of our guests, uh, if you don't mind, to stand up and to extend your arms in blessing over our graduates. God of life and of love, you have given us Jesus to lead us on our journey so that we might not walk in darkness, but may have the light of life. For every good grace of these past years, we thank you. Pour out your blessings upon our sisters and brothers who have completed this stage of their journeys at the School of Theology and Ministry. As they go forth to be ministers, teachers, scholars, and witnesses of the resurrection throughout the world, may they continue to be nourished and continue to grow. May their hearts be filled with mercy and sealed with peace. May they be ever aware of how deeply they are loved. May they be agents of reconciliation in your weary world. May they see the face of Christ in every heart they meet, and may everyone they meet see the face of Christ in them. O Holy Spirit, poured out abundantly today on the Feast of Pentecost, ignite their hearts with passion for setting the world aflame with your love. Empower them to stand for true justice, to be in solidarity with all who suffer, to teach by word and example, and to grow ever closer to you. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please be seated.
We shall now have the awarding of diplomas by program. Dr. Jennifer Bader, our Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, will read the names of the graduates. Will the graduate in the Master of Arts and Pastoral Ministry program please stand? Actually, there's only one. <laughs> As I call your name, no. Please come forward to receive your diploma from the Dean. Edith Montes Jankowski. Okay. Will the graduates in the Master of Arts in Theology and Ministry program please stand? As I call your name, please come forward to receive your diploma from the Dean. Anna Burbano. <laughs> Madeline Joyce Burns. Elizabeth H. Eckborg. <laughs> Cecilia M. Folang of the Sisters of St. Therese of the Child Jesus. <laughs> Nancy Francis Goggin. Emmanuel Ama Idoko. Anna S. Lawler. Andrea Ruth Miller. John William Morton. <laughs> Teresa Nguyen. <laughs> Andrew Temetope Agadon. Modestus C. Anwumelu. <laughs> Kelly Marie Sankowski. Will the graduates in the Master of Theological Studies program please stand? As I call your name, please come forward to receive your diploma from the Dean. Brian Bennett. Okay. 
We'll celebrate Brian anyway. <laughs> Scott Victor Cedeno. <laughs> Mark C. Foudy. Michaela Jean Fulton. Mary Patricia McCauley. Zachary James Morris. Amira A. Orozco. Sarah Jane Provost. Thomas Sobolevsky. Sadie Villarreal. And I know this next one is here, but she is also receiving another degree. Uh, Cheng Su Wang. Will the graduates in the Master of Divinity program please stand? And as I call your name, please come forward to receive your diploma from the Dean. Javier Benavides of the Society of Jesus. <laughs> Catherine Mahela Christie. Javier del Angel of the Order of Friars Minor. <laughs> Daniel N. Gustafson of the Society of Jesus. Michael Lamana of the Society of Jesus. <laughs> Martine Nyo of the Society of Jesus. Novotny. <laughs> 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 
Mary Claire O'Brien Wilson. Molly Marie Minerath. Anna Elizabeth Ryan Bender. Francisco Gabriel Serrano Moreno of the Order of Friars Minor Capuchin. Brian Andrew Strasberger of the Society of Jesus. William Christopher Woody of the Society of Jesus. Justine Warden. Will the graduates in the Master of Theology program please stand? As I call your name, please come forward to receive your diploma from the Dean. Charles Adai Kankam. Barry Rose Bliss. Timothy Chapman. Aaron Benjamin Malnick of the Society of Jesus. Peter de Sibyl Vondo of the Society of Jesus. <laughs> Matthew Onyamechi Okereke of the Augustinians of the Assumption. Michael Ka Heng Pung of the Society of Jesus. <laughs> Allison Marie Seeger. Brian Andrew Straussberger of the Society of Jesus. And once again, Cheng Su Wang.
Will the graduates in the Licentiate in Sacred Theology program please stand? As I call your name, please come forward to receive your diploma from the Dean. Barnaby Hungevu of the Society of Jesus. Michael Labana of the Society of Jesus. Patrick N. Mugisho of the Society of Jesus. Martine No of the Society of Jesus. Juan T. Nyo of the Sisters of Mary, Queen of Peace. Nguyen Than Hu of the Society of Jesus. <laughs> Reginald Tochi Nwakolobi of the Society of Jesus. Nwanguma. Jude Thaddeus C. Osondu. James Randolph Page of the Society of Jesus. <laughs> William Christopher Woody of the Society of Jesus. I see we have our dual degrees here, yes? Wonderful. Yay. So the following graduates are receiving a Master of Arts in Theology and Ministry from the School of Theology and Ministry and a Master of Social Work from the Boston College School of Social Work. Will the graduates please stand? And as I call your name, please come forward to receive your diploma from the Dean. Finito. Charlotte Ann Coey. Rachel Elizabeth Dunlop. Michael Thomas Lank. <laughs> Kingsley Chima Mbam. <laughs> Celebrate Kingsley in his absence. 
Aaron Neva McGuire. Kaz Novak. Katerina Elizabeth Pendleton. Will the graduate in the Master of Arts in Theology and Ministry and Master of Arts in Mental Health Counseling please stand and come forward. This graduate is receiving both degrees, one from the School of Theology and Ministry and the other from the Lynch School of Education and Human Development, Robert Mudge. The following students have graduated from the School of Theology in Ministry in August 2020, December 2020, and May 2021, but could not be present with us today. Receiving the MA in Theology and Ministry are Kevin Abdo, Dale Clark, Russell Fiorella, John Hanlon, John Howell, Michael Hyatt, Sarah Marie Leiden, Jessica Lyons, Mary Lucy Ukaomo Mbamara, Coralise Munoz Feliciano, Roberto Ortiz, Abigail Ray, and Amy Russo. Receiving the Master of Theological Studies degree are Brianna Arambula, Lorraine Armand, Samuel Bauer, Emily Cardenas, Hayden Cowart, Olivia Dooley, Michael Durant, Daphne Figueredo, Elizabeth Fountain, Rebecca Hammock, Madeline Infantine, Michael Infantine, Maria Koutsouris, Gabriel Lawson, Marissa Like, Mena Messia, Vincenzo Panachia, Michael Phelan, Nathaniel Ryan, and Samuel Scheidt. Receiving the Master of Divinity degree is Joseph Everton. <laughs> Receiving the Master of Theology degree are Justin Campbell, Hannah Ferguson, Nevin Garich, Jin Ri Kim, Pamela Munyakenye, and Laura Tringali. Receiving licentiate in sacred theology are Lavelt Mishad and Jason Mojica Sanchez. And Nathaniel Sanders. Receiving the doctorate in sacred theology are Joseph Briotti and Michael Gabriel Coughlin. We'll now have our uh, closing prayer and to give a blessing from the faculty is Sister Margaret Guider of the Order of St. Francis.
Let us pray and bless once again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Pour out upon these graduates your gifts and graces, that they may go forth walking humbly, acting justly, and loving tenderly according to the call that each one has received. May the knowledge, wisdom, and insight they have gained during their years of study, especially during this time of pandemic, equip them for the diverse ministries they will exercise among the people entrusted to their care. In union with the Father and the Son, lead them and guide them in the ways of truth, goodness, and beauty, that they may flourish in hope, faith, and love, as prophets, as disciples, and as ambassadors of reconciliation. Bless them with joyful hearts. Bless them with generous spirits. Bless them with health and strength. Protect them from all harm. Dear graduates, as a faculty, we now extend our hands in blessing as we pray. May you always be with God, wherever you may be. And may God be with you always. Amen.